Hello, hello, how are you doing? I trust the Lord is uh, keeping you strong and just reminding you of His love, His presence, His purpose in and through you. When was the last time that you had an experience of unanswered prayer? That you really were earnestly in praying and then God didn't answer? Well, many times, you know, when I'm talking to the little children, I say, God hears all your prayers. And then God answers all your prayers, and sometimes not the way that you want. Uh, his answers are many times, yes, and then he does answer your prayers. Uh, sometimes not in your time, and sometimes God says no. And sometimes, many times, and God says you need to grow. Uh, so you shouldn't just stop praying once, twice, or three times, but uh, you need to continue to persist uh, because unless you continue to persist, sometimes you forget that you prayed, but as you keep praying, and then when God answers, you know that, that God is answered in response to uh, your prayer. But then uh, when you keep praying, God may be whispering something else. So you need to keep on praying, but there's something else that you need to do, and that is you need to grow up. And so that you will be part of that answer to that prayer. And that's what God is working in our lives. But there are also times when God says clearly, no. And today, we're talking about Job and his unanswered prayer. And he was talking to God. God, what's going on? God, how come you're not answering? And God, how come you're not responding? And then we will pause together, reflect on his unanswered prayer, and then how you and I are to respond. Job chapter 30, verses 16 through 31. And now my life ebbs away, days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones, my gnawing pains never rest. In his great power, God becomes like clothing to me. He binds me like the neck of my garment. He throws me into the mud, and I am reduced to dust and ashes. I cry out to you, God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. With the might of your hand, you attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. I know you will bring me down to death, to the place appointed for all the living. Surely no one lays a hand on a broken man when he cries for help in his distress. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Yet when I hoped for good, evil came. When I looked for light, then came darkness. The churning inside me never stops. Days of suffering confront me. I go about blackened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I have become a brother of jackals, a companion of owls. My skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. My lyre is tuned to mourning, and my pipe to the sound of wailing. Verses 16, it goes like this. And now, in the present, his suffering, what he's feeling now. He says, my life, my soul is ebbing away. My soul is being poured out. My strength is just uh, being gone. And it's just being poured out. And I am very near to just uh, losing everything about my life. And that's how he feels. That night and peace is my bone. And then if he feels that God's great power is coming against him. In verse 19, he says, God has uh, thrown me into the pit and into the mud, and then I am being reduced to dust and ashes. And that's how he's feeling. And that's how he can make sense. It's 
God who is attacking and God who is bringing his uh, wrath against me. And, and that's no other uh, explanation. That's how he's feeling. And then, but verses 20, he goes on. He turns to God. And then he complains to God. He's pouring his heart to him. Uh, I think this is a, a very important thing that he does. Uh, rather than saying, God, I'm not going to talk to you because you're not treating me right. And I'm going to take a vacation from you. No, he's coming to God and pouring his heart before God. He says, I cry out to you, God, but why do you not answer? I stand up, but you don't look at me. And then I, you turn to me ruthlessly, and then you snatch me up, drive me before the wind. You toss me about into the storm. And then he's picturing, God, you're like the, the, the false gods of uh, other nations, where uh, the nations and, and then their understanding of storm God who comes against wage war against uh, uh, God's people. And then with a storm coming and attacking, and then you are unlike the God that I know, and then you are treating me in this way. What is going on? What is going on? And then he sees, he sees that you are coming and bringing this wrath. And then in verses 21, 6 and thou, and then all my hope is just gone because evil is keep coming. And I'm looking for light and then darkness keep coming. And then days of uh, suffering are keep coming. And then, you know, uh, what's going on is, uh, you know, he's becoming uh, blackened and then he is uh, uh, standing before others and before God and crying for help. And then, you know, he's getting no help from anywhere because he feels that God's wrath and hand is coming against him. Uh, he is like uh, a person with just a, uh, a stick skinny and then just a, with a, a little skin and he's about to expire. Well, we see here, and Job keep coming and then pouring his heart before God. I think this is a very important reminder for you and me as you are going through a difficult time, just like in so many uh, chapters in Book of Psalm, as David and many others come and pour their hearts of sadness, anger, confusion, sorrow, tears, and then God often meet together with them. And then God often just give them the answer, and then God just a, a responds to their a deep pain and suffering. But then here, we don't see God's respond right away until the very end when God comes through. And God restores everything, all right? But then Job's suffering that he is going through, God, why are you against me? God, why are you not answering? This points to another innocent person that's crying out to God. God, if possible, remove this cup from me. He prayed again, and he prayed again. And on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then God does not respond. And then God does not come through to his prayer until the end. And that person goes all the way to death. Why? Because that innocent man took our place and carried our sin and then absorbed and received God's wrath upon him and then went all the way to death and all the way. You know, you can't uh, but to think about this unanswered prayer that Job experienced unless he, this points to unanswered prayer that Jesus experienced because 
of you and me because of that, that Jesus took our sins upon him and he died in our place. Friends, I hope in the midst of your unanswered prayers that God will draw you closer to the cross. Friends, you may be going through a very difficult time. You may be praying, and God may not be answering. Rather than feeling despair, walking away from God, I hope that you will come to Him and pour your hearts before Him. And many times, as you pour your hearts before Him, He meets together with you, and then He touches you in a deep way. But then he also draws you closer to him and reveals his heart towards you. Uh, one of the things that God reminds us is for us to come near to the cross and to see his heart for you as you're experiencing sorrow, that you come to know his sorrow, your sadness, your pain and anger, that you come to know him and his anger, his pain, and especially as we come to the cross, that his love for you, even for your wrong. You know, as we come and grow in giving thanks and appreciating his love for you, you know, as you grow more and more and more, you know, what that does is it gives you a deeper capacity to live in joy in the midst of living in the broken world. Sometimes people and what they do wrong uh, may not easily be resolved as you think about writing and then making it right by paying back or dealing it this way or that way. But then with more of God's grace, it helps you to have more of his grace in responding to many of other issues. I hope you and I will grow deeper as we grow more and more in our appreciation, love, and thanksgiving of how God has poured his love towards you. And when and Jesus died on the cross, when God did not answer his prayer, it was because God was answering your prayer. And because God chose to accept you, the sinner, in his place, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your grace. Help us to grow in the midst of difficult pain and issues that we may go through. That we will come near to you and then we will have our eyes fixed on you, that we will grow in appreciation, thanksgiving, worship of your love so that we may learn to live as your children. God, we thank you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.